Racism has been on the rise and we have seen the triple threat to South Africa's future, which is unemployment, poverty and inequality. And I think when we speak to the issues around racism, it's the structure that excludes people, not merely on the basis of their race, but of their class and gender as well. When looking at racism, you have many incidences now as a result of a, a huge legacy of apartheid that excluded people, that put people into different communities. Young people continue to be excluded from the economy, for one. They continue to be excluded from positions of power. And the damaging effects of this means that young people are left hopeless and helpless in their communities and unable to find basic necessities to, to live a decent life. I think the, the role of our young people in this community now is to make sure that their frustrations and anger is translated into practical action. My name is Irfan Mangera, and I'm proud to be a human rights educator because education is the most powerful weapon in which we can change the world, as Madiba said. I grew up in a small town called Indonesia. Indonesia was one of the areas as part of the Group Areas Act where Indians were forced to live. The area is predominantly made up of people of Indian descent. My family had unfortunately been forced out of their homes by the apartheid regime and this was in an act of violence against them as a family but the entire community in itself who now has to bear the legacy of being forced so far out, 35 kilometers away from the city center. I think that kind of experience and lived experience motivates you to want change and to want to change the lives and the experiences for others so that generations after us don't have to experience the same kind of treatment and the same kind of system. I chose to become a human rights educator because it is the space and the platform in which I can create the most change and impact and influence the lives of young people who I am most passionate about. I work for the Ahmed Kathrada Foundation and Kathrada was one of Madiba's close compatriots and he was part of that same generation that fought against apartheid and ensured that we are brought into a democratic dispensation. That generation had a vision of a South Africa that is non-racial, that is non-sexist, that is based on equality and fairness for all people who live in South Africa. The work I do at the Ahmed Kathrada Foundation is basically encouraging young people in South Africa to take charge, to organize themselves, to mobilize young people in their communities and develop a consciousness. We do this through multiple means. One is a Kathrada workbook based on his life lessons that go through anti-racism training. We do this through workshops in communities as well as at our central venues. We do this through historical tours that link us to the past, but also create the necessary debates around the issues we face today. Our model is to create youth clubs across communities in South Africa, where we can build a generation just like the Madiba generation of people who are committed to the change process and to development, so that we see transformation happen, not just at a macro level, but at a micro level within each community. So this campaign is about the communities, about ensuring that everyone's right to education is met. But when I started the foundation, I didn't know what an activist was and how important activism was. But seeing how committed Irfan was, it motivated me to also be committed and also have passion in activism. Before. I did not know more about human rights. It is just a thing that people talk about. But now I know my rights and also that my, my rights have responsibilities. And my responsibility is to protect my rights. I want other children to know that they have rights. And in order to respect other people's rights, they have to respect their own rights. Why it's important for young people is that we need to grow as a generation that encourages solidarity between one another. And if we don't do this based on respecting each other's fundamental human rights, we will only see more devastation, more war, more corruption, more greed, and more 
power-hungry individuals who do not wish to treat people equally. Human rights education is about opening up people's worldviews. It's about challenging mindsets. It's about encouraging debate. It's about having the ability to use our mindset to create change. Human rights education therefore provides a necessary platform and a necessary base in which all people can work towards a common understanding. An understanding that is based on equality, on justice, on fairness. And I think these are critical values that are taught. Throughout our youth clubs and the young people that we've trained, we've seen many forms of action. We've seen how our young people have committed to challenging the issue of service delivery where, for example, a local library that was built for eight years now has not opened to the community yet. And our young people have been campaigning, getting petitions signed, getting support from broader communities and broader society to apply pressure on those who have the power to open it, who have the power to ensure that education is accessible. We've seen in some communities how young people have taken a step to protect their livelihoods and protect attacks against xenophobes who continue to threaten their community development. We've seen how young people have become election observers and who have been able to monitor and ensure that free and fair elections happen in South Africa and that at a localized level we encourage civic education and we encourage civic participation. Ultimately for us human rights education gives us that framework where we ensure that there's an active participant in society rather than a passive participant. We want to ensure that that generation or our generation is one that is proactive and challenging on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. 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 Yeah.